go to work. work. We did it. Yeah. Come on. All right, Coach. Yeah. You know, I got a lot of flack over last week's show. Did you? I had a lot of people hitting me up telling me I was crazy about the Dark Knight. You know what's crazy is that our coaching staff have been arguing about this <laughs> ever since that last show, about which one is better. Um, Devon Johnson says the Dark Knight, hands down, is better. Myself and Teron has said that we think that the Infinity War is better. Um, Dan said that he likes Dark Knight. Uh, talk about as far as being a movie. I was like, listen, we're, we're not saying we don't like the movie. I just don't know how you can say as far as like a comic book movie that it is better. It's just, it's, yeah, we're not going to agree on this. It's okay. No. It's all right. What did you think about Thor Ragnarok? Before I, you know, it was completely. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. It's just different. Now, I, I said last week that I thought that Aquaman was not going to be good. Yeah. So I made a point to watch <laughs> Aquaman. All right. And it is not good. I'm, I'm just, it was not good. It was not good. I wanted it to be good. It's one of those things that I'll watch it again, I'm sure, like Green Lantern, which was an awful movie. It's yeah. terrible. It's terrible. But because I like comic book movies, you I want to watch it. Yeah. But Aquaman is in that same boat. Like, the acting was so bad in that movie. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, it's just bad. Just bad. All right. So, after the show last week, I also got a little flack talking about my rap choices. Yeah. I don't know what it is. You know, we ain't forget about the classics we just have to be talking about the things that we like. Yeah. A rock him is good. We love him. Rock him is, he's the greatest. <laughs> it's like, there's, yeah. he's, he's Tom Brady. Yeah. Figure I'll throw that in I on Super Bowl Sunday. Patriots fan over here. Why not? Yeah, I got you. That's right, Ike. You know, you're making it back a second year. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ike, Ike just say, Ike was giving me the evil eye last year right before that Super I Bowl. I bet. I remember. And listen, I had to hear about it every day. The, the horrible state of the Redskins fan. You know, after that Super Bowl, John bought, <laughs> John just sent to my house a LeGarrette Blunt shirt. <laughs> I told my wife if I ever see that shirt in the house, burn it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, enough about that. All right. This week, yeah, uh, tough week because of the weather last week. Well, Always. you know, we didn't get to play a game. We only were scheduled for Tuesday. Uh, we didn't have a game scheduled for Friday, but the game that we were supposed to have against Stonewall, which was going to be our senior night, got canceled. We were going to play it on Thursday, but then we didn't have school on Thursday. So now we have three games this week. Tough slate. Any game in our district is always tough, but having to play Osborne on Tuesday, Stonewall Wednesday, and OP on Friday. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> Your final three games of the season, right? Correct. That's always nice to have those three in the last week. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. Um, obviously, it's good condition as far as trying to figure out how you would function in a regional tournament situation because you would have to win three games to basically win the regional championship in a week well if you if you get the first round by right so you know in back-to-back -back nights hot having two tough opponents in Tuesday and Wednesday with Osborne and Stonewall we will actually the depth of our team helps in that so we won't have to play guys an exorbitant amount of minutes that a lot of teams would have to do so we'll be okay district games mm-hmm they're coming for you? Yeah, they are. Because at this point, we're the only ones still undefeated. Um, I'm pretty sure winning one might do the trick, but winning two for sure would lock up the regular season for us. I know that they want to make sure that they have a, a stake in that and want to get their claim to doing stuff. So I'm, I want to say right now that Osborne and Stonewall are sitting at four and two. Uh, so, you know, we need to get them both and then obviously finish it off with OP. If we can finish undefeated in the district, that would be something that's never been done before by us. So, Awesome. Yeah. Um, there's a clear line of people that are teachers in Prince William County mm -hmm. and people that are basketball coaches in Prince William County. Yes. Uh, you can see on social media everything, yes. how excited teachers, principals, and everything are when there's a, when there's a day of school canceled. Yes. Not quite the same for a basketball coach. It's 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 rough because I'm both. <laughs> <laughs> so I was um, you know, you obviously you get excited about having a snow day and having the day off. Right. 
but on game days, it's it's a pain. Uh, yeah. You know, you don't want to have to miss practice as well, but the games make it even worse because you have to reschedule and figure things out. I mean, we lost two games off our schedule because they were non-district games mm. that were against Colgan and Woodbridge that we just completely just canceled out because of snow days. So, you know, obviously, you know, having kids and they're excited about having a snow day and everybody's off. And then, like you said, you talk to your other teacher friends and they can't wait. And they said, well, they're looking at the weather forecast <laughs> right. weeks in advance. And you just sitting there quiet be like, I don't want to be that person that ruins it for everyone else because I want to go to school. Yeah. I'm good with two hour delays. Just have a two hour delay and then we can go. That way we can play our game. And then you can cancel it the day after that, <laughs> you know, but on game days, it is definitely a pain in the neck. Well, how, as far as the rescheduling part, because, I mean, like you said, you had to reschedule two from last week. Mm -hmm. um, how quick are those decisions made? How is that process taken? Like, is that something where it, once the decision is made that school is going to be canceled or after school activities are going to be canceled, is that something where you're on the phone with the, with the other head coach or is that uh, your AD is on that, the phone? That's our AD. Our AD, Brad Qual, is the best AD in the state, in my opinion. Um, does a great job of being on top of all that stuff in advance, to be honest with you, and, and have a plan set in motion of whether or not how he's going to reschedule games and win. And, I mean, it's not just us he's juggling. He's juggling the sub-levels mm -hmm. with freshmen and JV. He's got to worry about if the gym's available because it could be wrestling, gymnastics. Right. Um, if it's a home game, and it's just he does an excellent job of, do, of doing what he does and then communicating that with me so I can get the information out to everyone else. Because you got to think, too, you got to organize referees for that night. Right. Might be a game that they're referenced somewhere else. So. And it's not like we haven't had a shortage of referees lately. Right, right. Um, he does a great job with Pete the Patriot, too. That's fun. I've seen that. That's funny. Is that? Uh, Pete the Pioneer. Pete the Pioneer. Yeah. That's what it is. Um, I screwed that all up. No, it's all good. It's all good. I mean, he, his, his tweets on the, the Patriot <laughs> Pioneers sports one is is classic. Like the the gifs or gifs, however you pronounce it, that he uses, are hilarious. And I saw him sledding. Yeah, man. I'm not sure who's in the Pete the Pioneer yeah. outfit, but the fact that he was outside sledding for one of those videos on the snow day was amazing. It was. So, it was. You know. All right. So earlier today, mm -hmm. had a chance, to sit down with uh, a couple of the guys. Yeah. Yeah. From your good. team, good. a couple of the guys who. Uh, are underrated in this area yes and a couple of those guys who should be on every college coach's radar right now totally agree totally agree um anytime we can get them more publicity is a great thing um you know just i thought it would be a good thing to start having some guys on the show Absolutely. so they can get used to talking in front of the camera and doing media stuff because that's important to be able to public speak in whatever regard so yeah and then on top of that, if they can get any more exposure as far as being seen by college coaches and get them to hear them and see how they talk and, and talk about their games a little bit, that's a great thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a chance to sit down with Hagen and Devin. Mm -hmm. Take a look. All right, Hagen, Devin, how are you guys doing? I'm good. I'm doing good. How are you? Why you defer to the point guard? Because. Don't he, do that. He bring the ball up first. So like. Usually, usually like, he gets you the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I understand that. Yeah. Well, guys. Obviously, you're having a great season. One loss on the year, heading into the playoffs. Take me through this season a little bit. How's it been for you? Uh, we've been playing great. We've been competing with everybody and beating the teams we should beat. We've just been getting after it. Uh, this year uh, has been really fun. We've been just doing what we need to do um, and just going out there and making a statement every time we play. What did you guys do in the offseason in preparation to have the year that you're having? We did a lot. Um, from running on the track to getting in the weight room, in the gym, we were just at it all summer. And he constantly told us, like, during the summer that what we did was going to pay off during the season, and it has, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just got after it. Every day we had workouts, we were just getting after it. Every day we had lifting, we were in there putting the work in and running on the track early in the morning, and it just really panned off. Hagan, you, you, I mean, obviously last year, Ike was there, you know, state player of the year runner like he was in the conversation how different is your role coming in being more of a vocal leader being being the guy with the ball all the time it's changed a lot uh, last year I backed up Ike I didn't really play a lot but this year I have to like take control of the team and like facilitate everything and yeah my role has just changed a lot I have to do like a bunch of different things like last year it was just come in give good minutes when Ike needed a rest but this year like I have more like stuff on my shoulders and stuff like that. Yeah. 
now you guys have played together for a long time. Yeah. So uh, how much was it more comfortable for you having him step into that role this year? Yeah, a lot because like we've been playing for since probably like fifth grade. So like we know each other's game and how each other plays. So it's just like yeah, we just get after it together well. A lot you know a lot of people when they step out on the court, they see Hagen, they think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this. I'm gonna have my way with him. Then you see him play. Yeah. How much fun is it for you when people underestimate him and then he steps out and it's kills him on the court? Fun. It's a lot of fun because they think, oh, this matchup is going to be easy tonight until the ball is thrown up and it's jump ball, and then it's just game over from there. Yeah. Because he's used nine times out of ten beating his matchup. For you, uh -huh. you got a guy that right now, I mean, player of the year candidates, he's way up there. Uh -huh. How much easier does it make your, your job? Uh, it makes it a lot easier because um, – like that play where I'm tired or I need to just get an assist or something like that, I can give it to Devin and I can rely on him to make a play. So it's a lot easier when he's on the court with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you guys both got the big fella down low. That's got to be nice to have going in, into every game with. Mm -hmm. He kind of protects you guys a little bit down there. He is a rim protector and he, he saves our butt a lot. So like when we get beat, he's usually there and helps out. So yeah. yeah. Talk about your coach a little bit. He's standing far away from us, so he can't hear us right now. So I'm glad about that. But you've heard, have you heard him talking about how he dunked? A few times. He showed okay. us a couple of pictures too. <laughs> All right, pictures. They're, they're manipulated. They're not true. I told him he needs to be able to dunk before the end of the year. No, I don't know about that. Why you look at the rim like I don't you're know checking about the height? That. I don't know about that. Not gonna happen. Maybe not anymore. No. Nah. That time has passed? Yeah, I think so. Can he still shoot? Yeah, he can still shoot. When he comes out and plays with us in practice sometimes, he, he has a clip. But I don't think he has bounce no more. No? No. So is he as good as he thinks he is? I think so. Man, don't say that. Don't, don't say that. Look, you guys got the playoffs coming up. What do you want? I mean, obviously, you guys, two of the leaders on the team, what do you want the rest of the team to focus on going into the playoffs? I think we need to focus on coming into games strong, like starting out hot. So that, like, because as we advance further into the season, it's going to be harder to dig ourselves back out of our hole that we created if we come out slow. Yeah. So, like, just coming out strong, setting the tone. Mm -hmm. I think each player needs to focus on playing their role. Like, now that we're such a highly competitive team or winning a lot of games, people might get the big head and say, oh, it's now it's my time to shine. But I feel like if we keep playing the way we're playing, we'll advance forward. Well, you guys, good luck going forward. What you've done for the program and putting it, uh, the space that you've been able to put this program in, in your four years here is a really impressive thing to watch. And I just congratulate you on that, but don't stop, keep going for the playoffs. Thank you. All right? Yeah. Yeah, those guys, I tried to get them to talk more trash about you. <laughs> they wouldn't do it. I guess I'm doing a good job of scaring them. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. I did tell Hagen he had to leave, though, because I'm uncomfortable being the, you know, worst white dude on the set. <laughs> so I was a little uncomfortable with that. So, I've, I've seen him play, so I know it's obviously true. Yeah, Hagen could get it, man. I'm yeah. telling you, he does some stuff every day at practice. He's like, this guy is outrageous. So uh, I'm glad that now that some of the coaches have started to take notice of him and looking past the whole size thing. Yeah. Uh, I know a few coaches came and watched him play when we played against OP, and they really loved the, his feel for the game. Um, and that was a good thing. And then to top it off in that game, he had seven rebounds. Uh, so... <laughs> He, he plays a lot bigger than what he is. He's got long arms. Uh, he does. He's, just, he's a good basketball player. And a lot of times it's like, guys, don't look at the measurables. Look how good the person is and how hard they play. Yeah. And he does both of those things very well. There's guys smaller than him that had uh, pretty good careers in the NBA. Yeah. yeah. So what exactly. are we talking about? Right. Guys, if you can play, you can play. If you can play, exactly. Now, I will say this. Devin, it, it was about five minutes I had to get ready. I had to wait for him to fix his hair. Oh, listen, man, they, they, um, they were sending me messages to be like, all right, do we wear this? What <laughs> pants do we have to wear? I said, listen, just, you know, you put the polo on and be good. And then they got mad at me because they felt like it was going to be a full body shot and said this fit doesn't look necessarily how I wanted to look. Like, you can't coach everything. Uh, you know, and listen, I, and it might be my fault because I'm always a proponent of, like, you got to look good and to play good. And 
you know, a lot of times people talk about our staff and the things that we wear on the sideline and, you know, for district games we wear suits. So I think that might be some of the stuff that rubs off them. But Dev, Devin definitely enjoys his appearance for yeah. sure. That's no doubt about that. Well, I'm not going to knock him. Yeah. The way he's playing this year, I ain't going to knock him. He can do anything he wants to. He keep playing <laughs> that way. Basically. So. Coaches, it's very rare that coaches talk bad about other coaches. Right. On TV, on in, anywhere. And, you know, you, you understand that process of it. But are there things that you can look at? You know, we've talked about before, are there guys that you look at and you say, hey, I want to take this, I want to take this. Mm -hmm. But are there guys that you look at that are, whether it be other high schools, college, pro, that you look at and you say, whoa, I definitely don't want to do that. Oh, no question. Yeah. Um, it happens all the time. You know, you, you learn from people things that you want to do and you learn things that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and how you, sometimes you watch how a coach handles his players or his demeanor on the bench. Um, you know, you necessarily can't see their practices all the time, but you go to college practice and be like, I don't want to be that guy. And, and sometimes there are things that happen. And I ask my coaches that, Am I, do I do that? Just to make sense, because if I'm doing that, please let me know. Right. So I can stop doing that. So it, you definitely see things, and that's just not in coaching, that's in everything. You don't want to do things that reflect negatively on you and the people around you. So <laughs> that is for sure. Yeah. We might not say things about people out loud, for everybody here, but there are times we're watching other coaches do things and be like, I want to make sure that I don't do those things. Right. Right. So. But, all right, looking across, well, I mean, obviously, Super, we talked about it before, we got the Super Bowl going on today. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the greatest football coach ever is coaching today. Yeah. Are there things that you look at from coaches from other sports that you say, okay, maybe I could try to put in something like that? Yeah. Uh, you're always trying to learn different ways to motivate, different way, ways to get guys to do stuff. There was a great series that was on with Alabama's football team mm -hmm. earlier this year and listening to Nick Saban talk about how they do stuff and, and motivate the kids. Because, you know, you're, when you're that good yeah. year in and year out, but you have to recruit and find new kids to keep doing the things that they're doing, you want to figure out how he's doing that. Right. You know, uh, so it's obviously Bill Belichick being as successful he is. You try to listen to some of the things they talk about. Phil Jackson, I know I read his book. Tony Dungy read his book. And everybody's got different types of ideas and perspectives. Now, you have to find your own way. Right. You don't want to be a copycat of someone else because kids see through that and they know it's fake. Mm -hmm. But if you can see different things that they're doing and try to incorporate that into your own coaching philosophy, I, that's always a good thing. Okay. All right, three games this week. Sorry, yes. I got Duckbill face mask in, stuck in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> you got three games this week. Yeah. They ended out, um, I mean, obviously, Osborne, very good team. Yeah, I mean, they had a big game against Battlefield on Friday. Um, scored a lot of points, which obviously is something they hadn't been doing. So yeah. I hate to see them get it going at this time of the year. <laughs> <laughs> right. How much practice were you able to get in at the end of the week, the weekend, to get ready for that game? Uh, we had practice on Friday. Uh, we practiced Saturday, and then we'll have practice Monday. So we had a good three days. Good and more practice than anybody else has had. So because we didn't have to play Friday. Right. So. So it's a Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't leave a lot. Don't leave a lot of uh, practice time. No. So you know we had enough time to prepare, and like I said, we kind of focused on ourselves more than other people. So it's not like we have to like change our scout from game to game. Right. Mm -hmm. So you don't have anybody setting up with a video camera, Scott, and anybody's camera. Oh, my God. Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> I guess that's the new wave around here. You know what? If since, since we talked about it, I've heard, I've had probably five or six people say the same thing to me. Yeah. So it's got to be going on. I don't it's know. It's a thing. Yeah, like, I don't know Coaches what's going are literally on. setting up cameras to scout. It's like, are you kidding me? It's right very now? strange. Yeah, it's crazy. Very strange. Yeah. Um, especially, whatever. Anyway. Right. You got huddle. Right. Just ask for the film. Yeah. If it's that serious. Or just take notes like most people do. I feel bad now because I'm actually saying that, but the Patriots did get in trouble for that at one point. Exactly. Well, so that's looking, where they got it from. Don't look at me like that. Spygate. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, what? Who you got tonight? You know what? I'd, it's hard for you not to say the Patriots because of this greatness. And a lot of people like to hate greatness. I am the opposite. I do not do that. Yeah, I'm, I mean, maybe... I can say I don't always do that because when it comes to the Warriors, do I really want them to win? You know, I enjoy it seeing teams be good. You know, I was obviously I was a huge Jordan fan and Bulls when they were dominating the NBA. 
what the Warriors are doing is exceptional. As much mm-hmm. as I might not like some of the things that are trickling down to the kids and things that they can do them. Right. But watching it is great to watch, you know, and the anger you see that come from people with them being as successful as they are is hilarious to me. So when you hear people talk about the Patriots and yeah. they cheat and they, listen, stop it. Okay? Yeah. Just cut it out. You like, don't make they, it to nine. They're now. good. You know, they're this you don't make it that many times because you're they're not cheating. Right. They're just better than you. <laughs> and, and sometimes they get favorable calls, and this is always the argument because people talk about with Duke, the Yankees, um, yeah. you know, things of that nature. Now the Red Sox can stop complaining because I feel like they're starting to get some of those favorable things. But you get favorable calls because referees or umpires give you the benefit of the doubt because usually you're that good. Yeah. So I know that everybody was mad after the Patriots-Chiefs game because they called that legal blow to the head on Brady. In the pocket. Was it a bad call? Yeah. But there was like four other bad calls that happened on the other side. Like the fact that Eric Berry Berry was tackling Gronk 20 yards down the field on every route. Yeah. Okay. And even when the Saints-Rans game, it was so hilarious to me that how mad they were about that one call. But nobody wanted to talk about the face mask that was on Jared Goff the Mm -hmm. drive before. No. Nobody wanted to talk about any of those things that happened against them. And the Saints got the ball back after that with the chance to win the game, and Drew Brees threw a pick. Yeah. It's like, stop crying. If you still have a chance to win, I don't want to hear it. Right. You know, because as much as all that stuff happened, every time it was a third and long, they threw the ball in the middle of the Julian Elliman. Like, you can't stop that. Right. Like, you know it's coming. They, they, they did every it time. four times in a row. Do something about it. And you yeah. know why you can't do something about it? Because they're really good. <laughs> you talk right. Brady's really good. So, with that being said, I think that the Patriots are going to win the game. Okay. Would I be shocked if the Rams won the game? No, because the thing that hurt the Patriots when they lost to the Giants those two times, yeah. uh, bringing that up, I know it's very upsetting for you, is it that is. the pass rush. And that is one thing that the Rams can do is get to the quarterback without blitzing. So, Aaron Donald is a freak. Aaron Donald's a freak, and Indomitian Sue has decided that he's going to show everybody that he was the original one before was. there was an Aaron Donald. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's just if they do that and they get to him, but nobody's been able to do it this year. They've been protecting him. He hasn't been sacked one time in the playoffs. No. So if they don't get to him and they can't run the ball like they have because there's some phantom injury going on with Todd Gurley that nobody wants to talk about because I don't know why he wasn't yeah. playing that much in the NFC Championship game. They don't get to the quarterback. They don't run the ball. I don't see how they can win that game against them. No. It just, it's hard to, to, to go against Tom Brady in these situations because it usually doesn't happen that way. Right. And when it does, you're shocked. <laughs> right. Because everybody thought that he was going to drive the team down and win the game against the Eagles last year. Yep. And Graham made a great play and stripped the ball from him. Everybody thought that they were going to beat the Giants and then what's called oh. catch the ball on top of his head after not getting sacked. David Tyree. Oh, and they ended up throwing a touchdown. So... Even the Hail Mary they threw at the end, you were like, they're going to catch it. <laughs> right. you, you think these things are going to happen for great teams. Yeah. So, you know, I think that the Patriots will end up winning the game. I think it's going to be close. Yeah. Yeah. Throw away question here at the end we might talk about next week. Okay. Who's your favorite basketball player of all time? <laughs> Is that even a question? I'm saying. Well, you better get me started on this. We might not be able to end the show off that. I'll say Michael Jordan, and then we can spend at least 10 to 15 minutes talking about why he is and why everybody else they keep trying to say is not. This is a bit, like anybody watching I mean, this, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to the camera. Anybody that oh, knows me no. watching this right now knows how excited I get about this whole situation and how it's going to make me start talking. Now, I didn't say the best. I said, who's your favorite? Well, he's, listen, he's my favorite as well. Okay. Okay. And I listen, he's my favorite basketball player of all time. He's the best basketball player of all time. Now, the other guys that I like after that are a little bit different than other people's. I'm a big Kevin Garnett fan. Okay. Um, I'm a big Sam Cassell guy. That's one that you would not have expected. Yeah, that was that's a little... I, Sam Cassell is amazing. I, I love his game. I love the things that he did. Um, just to take it even farther back, and people are going to be like, yeah, right. I, Earl Monroe was somebody that I was a big fan of, mm-hmm. even though I didn't wasn't old enough to watch him play, like seeing like his old highlights. Right. Like, I'm like, man, that dude was a beast. Um, Shaq, of course, was amazing. And when I was able to actually dunk at one point in time, I used to like doing his little walk after I dunked the ball. <laughs> I got in trouble by my college coach doing that in the game one time. And I was like, just have fun. It doesn't really matter. Um, Shaq, 
let's say Kevin Garnett, Penny Hardaway was a big one. Penny Hardaway is my favorite player of all okay, time. Okay, so when I was growing up in my room, I had one wall dedicated to Michael Jordan. Okay. I mean, like posters, magazines that I would put like in the plastic, like pin up on the wall, jersey. The other side of my room was all Penny Hardaway. Like that, and I wish I had a picture my mom had of my room back then. Like literally, the entire wall was covered like with all their stuff, you know. So Penny Hardaway was a big one for me. So if I had to pick two, it would be Penny and like Jordan. Penny, uh, I just think he was phenomenal. Yeah, he's just beautiful. There's, There's another one like him, Tracy McGrady. Like they yeah. never got hurt. Right, right. It would be great to see how amazing they would have been. Yeah, and people really don't know a whole lot about Penny now about how great of a basketball player he was and how the knee stuff just kind of yeah. wiped him right out. There's a play. I watched it live on NBC, on NBA, on NBC. By far the best telecast ever for Always. the NBA. Tom Tolbert. Like, do you know that yeah. now Fox, I want to say Fox Sports, does that song for their yeah, college yeah. games? <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it, like immediately when it comes on, I'm like, I'm yeah. going to start watching every game on this channel just because they do this song. <laughs> right. NBA on NBA. NBC, Peter Vesey, Marv Albert, mm -hmm. Hannah Storm doing the halftime yep. stuff. Man, that was amazing. It was. Yeah. Well, there was a game, Orlando versus Chicago. It's the 23 year. So it was after the after he came back because he had already switched back to so 23. This is 72 and 10 year. Penny comes down, splits a double team of Jordan and Pippen, gets right to the basket. It was beautiful. He's six seven. He was oh, phenomenal. Six seven doing that. Yeah. He was nasty. Yeah, he was. I got to go watch Penny Highlights. Yeah, you do. <laughs> good luck with a busy week. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Hopefully I'll be in a good mood. Hopefully you'll be in a good mood. Me too. That means that we won the regular season. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You can think about it. If that's what you want to think yeah, about. Patriots, sure. whatever. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next week. All right.